the Brahma Sanghita, chapter 5, which is the only portion of Brahma Sanghita which is extant, chapter, uh, uh, text 27 and 28. Although it's the only part of Brahma Sanghita which is extant, uh, the, the, the prayers of Brahma therein constitute a summary of all the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. There's also uh, much for Vedic cosmologists, those who want to know about the worlds beyond in detail, they can find out much from there. Uh, I'm going to read text 27-28, which uh, is not part of Brahma's prayers, just before. Uh, this is about uh, Lord Krishna imparting the Gayatri mantra to Brahma. Brahma. Uh, I'm speaking on this today because there was Brahminical initiation today. I'm going to speak a little on the topic of Karma Gayatri. Uh, it's a very highly exalted topic and study of it can be quite technical also as will be uh, seen or heard. So this verse uh, Atta which means then so then Krishna Atta Venu Ninadasya Trai Murti Mai Gatihi Spuranti Prabhivesashu Mukhab Jani Swayam Bhuvaha Gayatri Gaya Tas Tasmad Adhigatya Sarojajaha Sangskritas Chadi Gurunad Dvijatam Agamat Tatata Tataha <clears throat> Translation. Then Gayatri, mother of the Vedas. See, just in that statement, Gayatri, mother of the Vedas, you could you know, spend at least a few hours talking about that. Then Gayatri, mother of the Vedas, being made manifest, i.e. imparted, by the divine sound of the flute of Sri Krishna, entered into the lotus mouth of Brahma, born from himself, through his eight ear holes. The lotus born Brahma, having received the Gayatri, sprung from the flute song of Sri Krishna, attained the status of the twice born, having been initiated by the supreme primal preceptor, Godhead himself. You may remember seeing on the cover of the Brahma Sanghita, the picture of Krishna playing his flute, and it's indicated that sound enters the ears of Brahma and initiates him. So, uh, Gayatri is manifested from the flute sound of Krishna and entered into the uh, eight ears of Brahma who became initiated in that way and manifested from his mouth. Uh, this Gayatri, by the way, when we say Gayatri mantra, generally it's understood to refer to Brahma Gayatri, which is the uh, well-known Om Bhur Bhuva Swatat Savita, etc. Uh, chant. Um, but it's not the only Gayatri mantra. Gayatri is a, a meter. Uh, a meter means a uh, syllabic arrangement of words into a particular format. And so there are different meters. The most common one is uh, on the stoop, the most common and most simple. That comprises most of the, most of the verses of Bhagavad Gita. Sarvadhaman paritya jamame kam sharanam raja hang tuang sabapa pebya moksha shame So like this, there are various uh, 
Sanskrit meters, of which Gayatri is one. There are certain rules for composing, uh, yeah, composing poetry in these meters, but Gayatri is not exactly composed. Gayatri is eternal, as will be. Yeah, so this is, this Gayatri, that was mantra that was imparted to Brahma, uh, was particularly the Karma Gayatri was received from the sound of Krishna's flute. Now, um, Gayatri is the mother of the Vedas. Uh, Karma Gayatri, that's true of the Brahma Gayatri, and the Karma Gayatri gives the um, gives the teachings which are the essence of the Vedas, but they are Vedeshu uh, Durlabham. They're not ordinary found in the Vedas. The the Karma generally that's considered not to be a very good word <laughs> for those who uh, are trying to be transcendentally advanced. It is the great enemy of spiritual advancement. Uh, Krishna warns in Bhagavad Gita and all transcendentalists, they know. that What is it that we're, we're trying to go up to Krishna? What's keeping us down is karma. But in this context, karma means the desire to serve Krishna or uh, that Krishna himself is all attractive which means that everyone is everyone desires him so it is the uh, mantra that invokes the presence and memory uh, and ultimately the service of Krishna who inspires others to serve him. So the purport by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakur is uh, the sound of Krishna's flute is the transcendental blissful sound Hence, the archetype of all Veda is present in it. In other words, all the Vedic knowledge is succinctly uh, there in the Gayatri Mantra and from expanded from Gayatri Mantra. The Gayatri is Vedic rhythm. That means it's a Vedic meter, Chanda. Chanda is the uh, common term, or the Sanskrit term. It contains a brief meditation and prayer. Karma Gayatri is the highest of all the Gayatri. So I said there's Brahma Gayatri, there is Karma Gayatri, there are various other Gayatri mantras. Those who are uh, initiated in Srila Prabhupada's line, we also chant uh, what is called Guru Gayatri, Gaura Gayatri, and within the uh, Gorya Sampradaya, there are others also, Nityananda Gayatri, Advaita Gayatri, but uh, we, actually one devotee who was initiated by Srila Prabhupada, he asked, why don't you give all those other mantras also? And Srila Prabhupada said, I just, what my Guru gave me, I'm giving you. That's all, that was his answer. So the Gayatri is Vedic rhythm, it can, yeah. Kama Gayatri is the highest of all the Gayatris because the meditation and prayer contained in it are full of the perfect transcendental sportive activities which are not to be found in any other Gayatri. In other words, uh, this Kama Gayatri gives entrance into uh, perfect transcendental sportive activities. It means the highest... Uh, pastimes of Krishna, particularly his uh, pastimes. Uh, this is discussed in Chaitanya Charitamrita also. I'll get through to that. I won't discuss, I won't go through the whole discussion. But there uh, Krishna is described as Aprakrita Madan, or the, the transcendental Cupid. 
the name for Cupid is Kama Dev, and then this Kama Gayatri, Krishna, is, uh, uh, or we offer prayers, we offer our meditation to Kama Dev. But this is uh, <coughs> actually it could be it could be interpreted interpreted in a completely mundane way for the mundane Kama Dev. You'd really get in trouble if you did that. You'd get really infected by material desire. But by chanting this uh, mantra with reference to the spiritual Kama Dev, Krishna, Kama Dev, who means uh, who invokes desire. So just as the mundane Kama Dev invokes mundane desires, in the hearts of the conditioned soul, so the spiritual, all-attractive Krishna invokes spiritual desire to serve him. Just as one is maddened by desire in material existence, so the perfection of spiritual existence is to be maddened by desire for Krishna. So this actually is the the principal subject of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as uh, maddened in love of Krishna, which is following in the footsteps of such Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees, uh, those those who are called Ragatmika, that their whole being is infused with. Uh, whole, full, spontaneous uh, attachment to Krishna. Uh, so we are to follow in the footsteps of such devotees. So uh, the Gayatri mantra that is attained as the sequel of the 18-lettered mantra is Karma Gayatri, which runs thus. Here the mantra is written and stated uh, but we don't it's written here but we don't uh, at least I was told by Srila Prabhupada not to say it to others so it may be written but I'm not going to say it you can read it if you like but even then the mantra any, anyone can read it but it doesn't mean that you get it it has to be imparted by a guru to uh, anyway, the mantra I'll read. I'll read it without the uh, karma bij, which is the first sound. I'll read the the rest of it. Karma devaya vidmahe pushpabanaya dhimhi tanno nanga prachodayat. So it follows the same uh, format as the Brahma Gayatri. Vidmahe, I know that person. Dhimahi. I meditate upon uh, and uh, prachodayat who uh, enthuses us or gives us knowledge or realization. <clears throat> uh, this uh, w w in the Brahma Gayatri that's generally considered to be a meditation upon the sun, the sun god. This is a meditation upon uh, the uh, Kama, Kama Dev, the spiritual uh, inciter of all desire. So in this Gayatri, the realization of the transcendental pastimes of Sri Gopi Janavalaba, who is invoked in the uh, mantra which we chant before this, Krishnaya Govindaya Gopi Janavalabhaya, uh, the realization of the transcendental pastimes of Sri Gopi Janavalaba after perfect meditation and the prayer for the attainment of the transcendental God of love are indicated. In the spiritual world, there is no better mode of endeavor for securing the super excellent rasa bidud love. As soon as that Gayatri entered into the ear holes of Brahma, he became twice born and began to chant the Gayatri. Whoever has received the, received the same Gayatri in reality has attained his spiritual rebirth. 
the status of a twice-born that is obtained in accordance with one's worldly nature and lineage by the fettered souls in this mundane world is far in inferior to that of the twice-born who obtains admission into the transcendental world because the initiation or acquisition of transcendental birth as a result of spiritual initiation is the highest of glories inasmuch as the jiva is thereby in enabled to attain to the transcendental realm. Uh, in other words, someone may be born in a family uh, of uh, dvijas, may be born as the son of a brahmana or a kshatriya or a vaisha, and be initiated uh, according to the family tradition, religious tradition, uh, into the chanting of the Brahma Gayatri Mantra. Uh, but that is not on the same level uh, as getting spiritual initiation into the chanting of the Gayatri Mantra for uh, <clears throat> elevation to the spiritual world. That mantra which is received in terms of one's family status, uh, if it is conceived of primarily in terms of family status, then that mantra may elevate one, but not to the spiritual position. It, it becomes a mundane recitation. So there's a very great difference between being initiated into the spiritual uh, recitation of the Gayatri Mantra and that of being simply born in the family of a Brahmana, Kshatriya, and Vaisha uh, and having the, uh, what is called the Upanayanam ceremony and chanting the Gayatri Mantra. Nowadays, uh, of, only in Brahmin families does this function go on, and in very few also. <clears throat> but some of those Brahmin families that do it, it's, uh, well, if they're Vaishnav, specifically Vaishnav Brahmin families, then the transcendental idea may be there also. But Srila uh, Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati Thakur, he uh, introduced the initiating with these Gayatri mantras and other Pancharatric mantras. Uh, people who are not born in such families. And he would initiate people who are born in Brahmin families and give them, again, Brahma Gayatri and other mantras, considering the the previous initiation to have no spiritual worth. Now, uh, regarding this uh, Karma Gayatri, there, there, there is a statement. Oh, I also need to get. Come, come here. Is, Bhurijan Prabhu uh, recorded in his uh, excellent and very instructional book at these verses. Uh, my glorious master, some anecdotes of his remembrances of his personal interactions with his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, he, in one anecdote which he recorded, Srila Prabhupada was speaking, and Prabhupada then mentioned how Brahma had first heard Gayatri directly from Krishna. He again questioned the devotees. So in the course of his talk, Srila Prabhupada is questioning the devotees. Which Gayatri mantra did Krishna bestow on Brahma? No one answered. The devotees were supposed to know. By this time, Srila Prabhupada had given the 
the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. So devotees were supposed to have read that and known this. Uh, no one answered, and then Burijan Prabhu said, I called out Kama Gayatri. Prabhupada nodded in approval and replied, You may utter it. Then I became confused and recited the Brahma Gayatri by mistake. <laughs> Prabhupada shook his head. Before it said the proper nod in approval and the proper shook his head sounds like a disapproval. All right. Um, now I'll read uh, from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita talks between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai, Madhya Leela, Chapter 8. Uh, next month I'm planning to go to Kovur on the banks of the Godavari where this meeting took place. I'd like to read through this chapter at that time with the, whoever may be there. I went there once before, a long time ago. Were you there? Yeah, we went there. And we read also at that time. So, uh, yeah, I'll read this. Uh, text 138 of that conversation. Brindabane aprakrita nobin madon karma gayatri karma for future. Not a single particle of time is wasted. Within this material universe, the devotees worship that transcendental abode as Golok Vrindavan. Lord Brahma himself said, Let me worship that spiritual land where Krishna is present. This transcendental Vrindavan is not a yeah, that's uh, this transcendental Vrindavan is not appreciated by those who are not devotees or self realized souls, because this Vrindavan Dham is all spiritual. The pastimes of the Lord there are also spiritual, none are material. According to a prayer by Srila Narotan Das Thing there. Our Kobinitai Chande Karuna Hoi Beishong Shara Bashanam or Kobi Tutcha Hobe. When will Lord Nitananda have mercy upon me so that I can realize the uselessness of material pleasure? Bishoi Charya Kobe Shuddha Hobe Mon Kobe Hame Herebo Sri Brindavan. When will my mind be cleansed of all material dirt? so that I will be able to feel the presence of spiritual Vrindavana. Rupa rog hunata pade hoibe akuti, kobe hama bujbo she jugal puriti. When will I be attracted to the instructions of the Goswamis, so that I will be able to understand what is Radha and Krishna, and what is Vrindavan? These verses indicate that first one has to be purified of all material desires and all attraction for fruitive activity and speculative knowledge if one wishes to understand Vrindavan. In reference to the words, Aprakrita nobin modon, Aprakrita refers to that which is the very opposite of the material conception. The Mayavadis consider this to be zero or impersonal, but that is not the case. Everything in the material world is dull, but in the spiritual world everything is alive. The desire for enjoyment is present both in Krishna and in his parts and parcels, the living entities. In the spiritual world, such desires are also spiritual. No one should mistakenly consider such desires to be material. In the material world, if one is sexually inclined and enjoys sex life, he enjoys something temporary. His enjoyment vanishes after a few minutes. However, in the spiritual world, the same enjoyment may be there, but it never vanishes. It is continuously enjoyed. In the spiritual world, such sex pleasure appears to the enjoyer to be more and more relishable with each new feature. Yeah, that in a nutshell is uh, Karma Dev is the uh, inciter, the exciter of spiritual sex pleasure, which in our mundane conception sounds to us very strange, but that's because we are very strange. Uh, 
But that is what the Karma Gayatri Mantra leads to, the realization of uh, actual sex pleasure. Karma means sex pleasure in the mundane sphere. And ultimately, uh, that is Krishna, is the supreme enjoyer. We are to be enjoyed by Krishna. In the spiritual world, such sex pleasure appears to the enjoyer to be more and more relishable with each new feature. In the material world, however, sex enjoyment becomes distasteful after a few minutes only, and it is never permanent. Because Krishna appears very much sexually inclined, he is called the new Cupid in the spiritual world. There is no material inebriety in such desire, however. Gayantang trayate yasmad gayatri twang tata smita. One who chants the Gayatri Mantra is gradually delivered from the material clutches. So that's one of the meanings of Gayatri, that by singing it, one is delivered from the material clutches. In other words, that which delivers one from material entanglement is called Gayatri. An explanation of the Gayatri Mantra can be found in the Madhyalila of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 21, text 125. Kama Gayatri Mantra Roop, Hoi Krishna Sharoop, Sharda Chobish Akha Thar Hoi, She Akha Chandra Hoi, Krishna Kari Udoi, Tri Jagat Koilo Kama Moi. This Kama Gayatri Mantra is just like a Vedic hymn, but it is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. There is no difference between the Kama Gayatri and Krishna. Both are composed of 24 and a half transcendental syllables. The mantra depicted in letters is also Krishna, and the mantra rises just like the moon. Uh, regarding this, uh, this, the very statement of 24 and a half transcendental syllables and how this uh, describes Krishna as being just like, or the, the mantra as being just like the moon. Uh, this is stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita and there are uh, commentaries by Srila Vishwanath Chakvar Thakur and Prabodhananda Saraswati, which in uh, rather technical language explain what does that mean by 24 and a half syllables and what does it mean that Krishna is described herein just like the moon now this is uh, in Vedic culture this understanding the mantra um, generally that is means that the, the guru will explain all this in reference to the uh, language, the Sanskrit language, the different meanings of each syllable. So those explanations are given by Vishnu Chakra Thakur and Prabodhananda, Prabodhananda Saraswati in this way. How these words, <laughs> with the Hare Krishna mantra, there are also explanations given, but the basic feeling is one of Krishna, please engage me in your service. But with mantra chanting, technical under, technically technical understanding should be there also. Which is one reason why persons, uh, certain persons say that these mantras cannot be imparted to pe unqualified qualified people. Well, no one will disagree that they shouldn't be imparted to unqualified people. But uh, they say the qualification is that one should be, or the major qualification is that one should be born in a Brahmana family. And in one sense, or, or they may justify that by saying that, well, you can't chant the mantra unless you understand Sanskrit with all, not just the language, but with all the ramifications and the grammatical nuances, not grammatic, linguistic nuances. So uh, that is 
true of chanting mantras. All the Upanishads, they're all Vedic mantras. <coughs> so there's a lot of technical linguistic analysis of the Upanishads. Mm. Okay, I'll go on with this. The mantra depicted in letters, so the, the, there's also, with mantra, there's also a yantra, which is a depiction of the uh, letters of the mantra arranged in a certain way. That's another whole great topic, mantras and yantras. Uh, the, the, the mantra depicted in letters is also Krishna and the mantra rises just like the moon due to this there is a perverted reflection of desire in human society and among all kinds of living entities because Krishna desires the desire of Krishna is invoked or Krishna as the desire or Krishna as the uh, inspiration or, or the fountainhead of all desire is invoked in this karma Gayatri because Krishna is full of, it, full of all desire as is explained here in Chaitanya Charitamrita all living beings are full of desire in this material world there is a perverted reflection of desire in the mantra which I will say again without the karma bij karma devaya vidmahe pushpabhanaya dhimhi tanno nangaf prachodayat Krishna is addressed here by three names Kamadev, Pushpaban, and Ananga. These are all different names of who in English is called Cupid, although the idea of Cupid is to most people seems to be a, a rather quaint, outdated idea that there could be anyone such as Cupid. In Piccadilly Circus, with the center of London, there's a statue of Eros or Cupid with his bow right in the center of London I don't know why someone must anyway it's there uh, that idea is there in the Western culture it came probably via the Greeks the, the goddess of the god of love has bow and arrows so Krishna is Karmadev the god of love Pushpaban he has uh, he shoots arrows, flower arrows, uh, which enter the heart and kill you by confusing you. But Krishna is the transcendental Kamadev. And Ananga, Ananga means he has no physical body. He was burned up by Lord Shiva. Uh, so, but, but then he became more dangerous because he goes everywhere and you can't see him. You're getting, we're getting shot by him all the time, but we don't even notice he's there. Especially uh, when there is contact between male and female, eye contact especially. Therefore, in, <laughs> in Vedic culture, or in any, or in any culture, the men and women, they, they only in only those who are allowed to by relationship they look at each other that's true otherwise the uh, karma dev has entry is allowed entry and takes enters there if there is through the eye contact of man and woman so uh, continuing the purport karma dev is madan mohan the deity who establish our, establishes our relationship with Krishna Pushpaban, he who carries an arrow made of flowers, is Govinda, the personality of Godhead who accepts our devotional service. And Ananga is Gopi Janavalaba, who satisfies all the gopis and is the ultimate goal of life. So we see here the connection. Sambanda, Abhideya, Prayoja. All of these verses and purports, they can be unpacked or explained more and more and more in so many ways. They... they in a synopsis, succinctly, there's so much is described here. 
This Kama Gayatri, again, Kama Devai Vidmahe Pushpabhanaya Dhimahe Tanno Nanga Prachodiyat, simply does not belong to this material world. When one is advanced in spiritual understanding, he can worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead with his spiritually purified senses and fulfill the desires of the Lord. Manmana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji maang namaskaru mame vaishasi satyang te pratijane priyosime. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, always think of me and become my devotee, worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail, I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Then again, as uh, quoted, uh, this, uh, in this purport, it's quoted from Brahma Sanghita, those verses which I already read. Uh, um, about Brahma being initiated by the flute sound of Krishna. Uh, and Srila Prabhupada further comments. Uh, oh. Yeah, anyway, I'll read it again. Now there. There's something wrong here again with the references. Atta Venu Ninda. Atha venu ninadasya trai murti mai gatihi puranti pravivesha shu mukhaap jani swayam bhuvaha gayatrin gayatas tasmad adhi gatya saroja jaha sangskritas chadi guruna dvijatam agamat tataha chaya prabudhota vidhir vigyata tatva sagaraha Tushtava Veda Sarena Shrutrenanena Keshava. Yeah, these are all verses in the uh, uh, Anustup meter. Then Gayatri, mother of the Vedas, having been manifested by the divine sound of Sri Krishna's flute, entered the lotus mouth of Brahma, the self born through his eight ear holes. Thus, the lotus born Brahma received the Gayatri Mantra, which had sprung from the song of Sri Krishna's flute. In this way, he attained twice-born status, having been initiated by the supreme prim primal preceptor Godhead himself, enlightened by the recollection of that Gayatri, which embodies the three Vedas, Brahma became acquainted with the expanse of the ocean of truth. Then he worshipped Krishna, the essence of all the Vedas, with a hymn. And then in the Brahma Sanghita begins the Chintamani Prakara Sadmasu, uh, famous prayers of Brahma. So the Srila Prabhupada completes this purport by stating the vibration of Krishna's flute is the origin of the Vedic hymns. Lord Brahma, who is, who is seated on a lotus flower, heard the sound vibration of Krishna's flute and was thereby initiated by the Gayatri Mantra. So I didn't state the karma bij while reading out those mantras. It is clean. In the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Srila Prabhupada explains that the word clean is the transcendental seed of love of God. The word Clean added to the Gayatri Mantra is explained in the Brahma Sanghita as the transcendental seed of love of Godhead or the seed of the Karma Gayatri. The object is Krishna, who is the evergreen Cupid, and by utterance of clean mantra, Krishna is worshipped. Uh, from Jaiva Dharma, quoting the conversation, uh, the Goswami says, the Srishti Khanda of the Padma Purana states that Veda Mata, Gayatri, Devi, the mother of the Vedas, was born in Vraja as a gopi and attained the association of Krishna, at which point she acquired the form of Karma Gayatri. So the uh, Ombur Bhuva Brahma Gayatri Mantra later 
in her, she's known as Veda Mata, the mother of the Vedas. So she was born as a gopi in Vrindavan and then she acquired the form of Gai Karma Gayatri. So the Om Bhurbhuva Mantra which is chanted uh, generally by people in mundane consciousness with the desire for elevation being inspired by the sun god or as the Vaishnavas understand by Vishnu as the predominating deity of the sun they pray to be inspired with the knowledge of the Vedas but most of them their understanding is a trigunya vishaya they take the Vedas to be a subject of the material world uh, going far beyond that the full understanding of the Vedas is to understand Krishna as the supreme enjoyer and the supreme or the only actual object of our desire. Uh, we are to be enjoyed by Krishna, but we also have desire. So our desire should be to serve Krishna. We also desire to be happy. So that happiness is in service to Krishna, seeing Krishna, touching Krishna, tasting Krishna, smelling Krishna, feeling. Uh, all desires are fulfilled perfectly in Krishna, which is manifest in the Karma Gayatri Mantra. So, uh, in this conversation in Jaiva Dharma, Vijay says, yet is it not true that Karma Gayatri is anadi, beginningless? So it stated that Gayatri took birth as a gopi in Vrindavan and then attained the form of Karma Gayatri. And then the question comes, well, isn't Karma Gayatri beginningless, eternal? Goswami, Karma Gayatri is certainly anadi. However, within the material universe, there is a time when she first manifested as Veda Mata Gayatri Devi. Later in her Leela, inspired by the good fortune of the many Upanishads, she performed sadhana on the strength of which she took birth in Raja along with Gopal Upanishad, that's Gopala Tapani. As Karma Gayatri, she is eternal. Simultaneously, she is eternally existence, uh, existent as Gaya, Gayatri Devi in a separate but eternal identity. All right, reading again from, Shri, uh, from teachings of Lord Chaitanya. No, this is my comment which I made leading into a... Yeah. Uh, even without recitation of Karma Gayatri, the chanting of Hare Krishna is sufficient to elevate one to the highest spiritual platform. So Karma Gayatri is chanted to uh, help awaken spiritual desires to serve Krishna, particularly in his form as the all-enchanting Cupid, who is most attractive to the gopis of Vrindavan. Uh, now I'm going to read from teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Krishna is worshipped by the Gayatri Mantra, and the specific mantra by which he is worshipped is called Karma Gayatri. Vedic literature has explained that that sound vibration, which can elevate one from mental concoction, is called Gayatri. The Karma Gayatri Mantra is composed of 24 and a half syllables thus. Uh, the Karma Beach followed by Karma Devaya Vidmahe Pushpabhanaya Dhimahe Tanno Nangaf Prachodayat. This Karma Gayatri is received from the spiritual master when the disciple is advanced in chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. In other words, this Karma Gayatri mantra and sangskar, or reformation of a perfect Brahmana, are offered by the spiritual master when he sees that his disciple is advanced in spiritual knowledge. Even then, the Karma Gayatri is not uttered under certain circumstances. In any case, the chanting of Hare Krishna is sufficient to elevate one to the highest spiritual platform. Hare Krishna. So, 
just a few points about Karma Gayatri on the uh, occasion of several devotees being initiated with that mantra. Hare Krishna. I'll finish there. There's much more that can be said about this and much could be discussed about 